check this out. So today in the mail, we just got our 2020 Shelby GT500 ownership supplement. And when you buy a new GT500, Ford sends this to you. Now, I I'm really looking forward to seeing what's inside. So let's open this up and see what you get when you buy a new GT500 from Ford. And, oh, that's awesome. A Ford Performance Blue 2020 GT500. This one is a base model. It doesn't have the gurney flap or the side splitter wickers, but this is the same color we're getting for our track pack GT500. Very cool. Beneath that, you get this booklet, and inside of it, it shows you your own certificate from Ford certifying your GT500. It shows your VIN and the chassis number associated with it. Oh, what's this? This is a letter from Jim Owens, and it says, Congratulations on your purchase. Welcome to a very exclusive group of GT500 owners. Okay, so overall, this letter talks about the, the GT500 track attack that you get a complimentary visit for when you buy a new GT500. So when it comes to buying any Ford Performance vehicle, you get a one day free track session with the Ford Performance Racing School where they teach you how to drive your GT500 at the limit. Another book, this one showing tons of photos and just background information of the development of the GT500. So it shows Carl Widman, the chief engineer, and also the prototype mules they have, and, and a timeline of all the GT500. So when it came back in the mid-2000s all the way till now. Here comes the best stuff right here to the right. You have this metal box and it shows a cobra on it and then a slip that shows the rotors of the supercharger and flipping it over, it gives you the background information. So the heart of the GT500, the 2.65 liter supercharger. Here we go, opening this up. Come on, open up. There we go. And wow, this is pretty heavy. This is quality stuff, it seems like. And they just go right in here and line them up so they can fit. And wow, and as you know, when these spin, they push in air to the engine. Essentially, these two rotors are within your 2.65 liter supercharger. And I'm guessing this gets put right there. Oh, that, that's awesome. And lastly, your chassis number plaque has its own spot on this display right there. To the left, I have a pretty good idea what this is. I think this is a toolkit that you get with the GT500. I've heard about this. Let's open this up and, and see what comes inside. Okay, yep, it is a toolkit. As you know, when you buy a GT500, you get the handling package or the carbon track pack. And with that, you can adjust whether you want your gurney flap on or your side splitter wickers. Wow, so everything you need for the GT500 is right here. The tools needed to remove the rain tray or adjust the carbon fiber wing to put on or remove the side splitter wickers, even the gurney flap, it's all within this. Lastly, we have a blue USB drive. Within it, there are two different videos. They do a great job of laying out the framework of what you need to know when it comes to driving your GT500 on the drag strip and on the road course. I hope you enjoy. Hello, and welcome to US 131 Motorsports Park in Western Michigan. I'm Jokin Tartak, professional driving instructor with the Ford Performance Racing School. We're here to provide tips on how to get the most out of your 2020 Mustang Shelby GT500 at the drag strip. Joining me are two of this incredible car's engineering team, Matt Traner and Brian Zorman. Together, we're going to teach you best practices on how to launch this rocket to your personal best quarter mile time efficiently and safely. You guys ready? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. So tell me a little bit more about pre-race inspection. Yeah, pre-race inspection is, uh, is critical for safety. It's good to do a walk around of the car. Uh, you want to check your fluid levels, uh, make sure your oil coolant are good, you know, that the car's not leaking anything. Uh, when we get to the drag strip, another thing for safety is uh, we generally try to have our headlights on, uh, have your AC off so you're not dripping water on the track. It's always a good idea to check your lug nuts. Uh, we recommend 150 foot-pounds of uh, torque. Uh, when it comes to alignment, right, from the factory for the street, uh, we're at negative 1.7 degrees of camber. Uh, for the drag strip, it's, it's nice to uh, realign that to negative one degrees of camber to stand up the, the tire and increase the contact patch uh, for putting, the, putting all this power to the ground. Tire pressure is another critical parameter. 
Uh, we would recommend starting with uh, 28 PSI cold in the rear tires and then adjust from there uh, to, get, to get the best results. Aero is a critical item that not a lot of people think about at the dragway. We spend a lot of time talking about downforce for the road course, uh, but here at the dragway, it's all about reducing drag. Um, so on the base car with the handling package, we would recommend removing the gurney flap and removing the front splitter wickers uh, for, for decreasing drag and increasing quarter mile trap speeds. On the carbon fiber track pack, uh, we would likewise would uh, would recommend lowering the wing position to the street position to reduce drag. It's pretty straightforward. None of those things should take a whole lot of time, so they can do it at the, at the drag strip when they get here. Absolutely. And then they're ready to go. Awesome. So Brian, does the car have to be up to any kind of temperature requirements? Yeah, the vehicle has to definitely be up to operating conditions that are stabilized for the vehicle before running it down the track to get the maximum uh, performance out of the vehicle. So don't just turn it on and go down to the strip, right? You got to kind of turn it on, let it warm up, and then uh, get up there and make it runs. Absolutely. Great. With 760 horsepower and 625 foot-pounds of torque, the GT500 is capable of running the quarter mile in less than 11 seconds. The best way to help manage that power is with the launch control feature. The launch control feature makes use of software specifically developed for the GT500. It helps minimize wheel spin, optimize traction, and help manage acceleration. I'm gonna pass it to Brian to show us the best way to set up launch control. For launch control at the racetrack, you wanna be able to be prepared. So get in the vehicle, take a look, and press the snake button on your steering wheel. That'll first then bring up the Cobra emblem on your dashboard and brings the track app up as an option. Press the track app with the OK button and then you can pick for your launch control uh, settings. Hit OK again, turn your launch control on to make sure that the square is checked on the dash. Then move down to your RPM setting, hit OK again, and that brings up your RPM range. You will have an option going from 1200 RPM all the way up to 3200 RPM. Our recommendation is starting in the middle of the setting and adjust accordingly depending on the weather and temperature of the track at that time of day. So what if I want to not use the launch control feature? We're going old school, huh? Yep, I like it. All right, well with this vehicle, we are able to control launch control with ourselves and our right foot. So first thing is, is turning traction control off, which is eliminating the computer work that the launch control system is set up for so that you become the launch control in the vehicle. So pick the RPM, press the gas pedal and hold it there till the light turns green. Once it goes green, just pull away and go. So now we're gonna put Brian to the test. We've got the GT500 all set up with the launch control feature. Ready, Brian? Let's do it. Go. launch control unavailable. Uh, if the vehicle is not operating at its, the right temperatures, uh, too, fluids are too cold, you'll get the warning that comes up saying unavailable, keep driving the vehicle till it's ready to go. Or if the vehicle is above operating temperatures where it's a fail safe mode, the warning will come up to say, hey, drive the vehicle, cool the temperatures down, going at a slow steady speed in the highest gear possible for a little bit and then the warning light will go out. If you also have the warning come up, uh, your steering wheel might not be completely straight for going down the road, or also you might be on uneven ground, which we have the sensors in this vehicle to verify that the vehicle is on flat ground at the racetrack. Um, if you then still have a problem with that, you might want to try to reset the system and creep up a little bit forward to reset the whole vehicle in a different location. <laughs> On the GT500, it all starts with drag mode. Matt, tell us more about drag mode. Sure thing. Drag mode changes a few parameters to get us the best performance on the strip. First, it enables launch control automatically. Then it turns our exhaust to the loudest setting track, so you can really hear the power as you go down the track. Uh, then it softens the rear suspension uh, to maximize the weight transfer, reduce any chances of wheel hop, and give you the best, best grip. Uh, most significantly though is it enters a launch control traction control uh, which maximizes some of the allowed wheel slip on this end of the track 
where you're going slow, uh, and then returns to a more conservative setting at the at the higher speed end of the end of the track. So this is how to do a stationary burnout using the line lock feature. We're going to hit the Cobra button. The track apps menu will come up. Press OK. Go to line lock. Press OK. You'll have to hold the OK button to initialize. A spinning wheel will come up. Once the wheel is solid, you have to firmly press hard on the brake. Press OK. You'll hear the brake booster. It'll start a 14 second countdown. Now if I get on the gas, it'll break the wheels free. And then press OK when you're ready to, to roll out of it. The second burnout method is a rolling burnout. Uh, we'll accomplish this with the DCT by being in drag mode or track mode where brake over accelerator is disabled. Uh, so we'll start by going to drag strip mode. Uh, then I'm actually going to use the launch control at the highest setting to spike the tires. I'm going to go to my track apps menu, go to launch control, RPM, set it to 3200. You can back out of that menu and turn traction control off. With traction control off, uh, the launch control will say unavailable, but it'll switch to a RPM only mode. So when I do my two foot on the brake and the gas, it'll hold the engine to 3200, which is enough to spike the tires. Um, so I'll go watt with my foot on the brake, uh, spike the tires, and then I'll quickly come back onto the brake. Uh, and that should hold the car. And then depending on how hard I stay on the brake, we'll decide how much uh, movement I allow. All right, Matt, you've got it ready. Shows how it's done. Okay. It's moments like that we all come to the drag strip for. That's great information. And many thanks to Brian and Matt for being here today. And many thanks to you for watching. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how to get the most out of your vehicle. Be safe out there, have fun, and buckle up. I'm Joe Kintartak, professional driving instructor from the Ford Performance Racing School. The new 2020 Mustang Shelby GT500 is truly a very rewarding car on road courses for both amateurs and pros alike. It can make any driver feel like a superhero. But like any great track performer, the GT500 needs to be appropriately set up before spirited road course driving or other high-speed events. And that's what we're talking about today. Joining us now is lead vehicle dynamics engineer of the GT500, Steve Thompson. This is the guy that knows everything about track setup. Welcome, Steve. Hi, Jogan. So when we go to the road course, where should we start? The first and most important place to start is with the owner's manual supplement for the Ford GT500. There's a specific track supplement which details all the procedures and information you're gonna to need to get started with the road course. First place we're gonna to start today is with aerodynamic setup of the GT500 track back. We're gonna start at the rear because that's the most important place to begin for aerodynamic balance. Carbon fiber track pack has two different wing settings, a street setting and a track setting. When we go from the street setting to the track setting, you're gonna start by removing the bolt from the front hole back here, loosening the front pivot, tilting the wing until the rear bolt holes line up, reinserting the bolt, tightening the front pivot, and then tightening the rear bolt. That'll prepare you for the track and get you the high downforce you need for stability in the car. For cars that come equipped with a swing, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to change it to the high downforce configuration by installing what we call the uh, gurney flap. Gurney flap installation begins with removal of the short screws at the back of the swing, installation of the gurney flap, and then reinstalling the screws, but with the longer screws included in the gurney flap kit. You can see in your owner's manual supplement for what screws and how tight to torque them. There's a number of different aerodynamic elements on the front end of the GT500 that help with precision and confidence on the track. The first place we're going to start is here with what we call the splitter wiggers. These are installed via four bolts on the inner fender at the front of the inner fender and a number of different fasteners on the bottom of the vehicle. You can find details on what specific fasteners to use inside the owner supplement. Next, we're going to move to underhood where we're going to remove the rain tray, which is a significant aerodynamic element and should really only be removed for track use with the rear wing uh, in the high downforce position. To remove the rain tray, we're going to start by opening the hood. Always start by releasing the driver's side catch first for the hood pins. Okay. 
Once the hood's up, we want to remove the Torx fasteners around the perimeter of the rain tray. Remove the rain tray, put it on the side. Now, Steve, while we're under the hood, what else should we consider before we go to the racetrack? So before we go to the racetrack, we want to prepare the car with a couple of different things. The first thing that we want to do is we want to install the Ford Performance catch can. That's going to help on the track quite a bit. You're also going to want to install the Ford Performance front strut adjustable upper camber mounts. That's going to help you get the alignment where it needs to be. And again, that alignment you can find in your Ford Performance uh, user supplement for track. If your vehicle wasn't equipped with the camber mounts or with the catch can as you received it, you can purchase those parts either from your Ford dealer or from the Ford Performance website. Is there anything else we should consider before we leave for the track? Yeah, one really good thing to do before we leave for the track is to make sure that we've got our tow hook. Tow hooks are located in the trunk of the car under the inflator kit. The tow hook installs in the front bumper. To put the tow hook in, press on the side of this small cover, pops out. Insert the tow hook into the threaded bung with the left hand thread if you need to tow the car at the track. Once you're done with it, cover just snaps right back in. So how about once we get to the racetrack, what about wheels and tires? Yeah, so wheels and tires, very, very important at the racetrack, right? If you have a carbon fiber track pack, one of the key things you're gonna wanna make sure is that this white section down here on the front of the carbon fiber wheel is clean. That's when it's most efficient and it works the best. You also wanna make sure to always torque your lug nuts to the specified lug nut torque that's in the owner supplement manual. And of course, you wanna set tire pressures. Now, tire pressures are, as you know, really, really important on track. We recommend never going out on a cold pressure less than 28 PSI. That's the value that we worked with with Michelin and that we used extensively inside uh, in testing on the track. And then as far as hot pressure, for best balance and best performance out of the car, we'd like to see about 38 PSI hot in the front and about 36 PSI hot in the, uh, on the rear. Note that when the car cools down, you're gonna need to recheck that 28 PSI to make sure that you don't go out at less than 28 PSI cold. What about the brakes? It's a great question. Um, in the owner supplement, and when you receive your GT500 before you take it to a track, there's a really detailed brake burnishing procedure. Basically, what you wanna make sure to do, um, you wanna follow the procedure as close as you can, but for the most part, what you wanna make sure to do is you wanna do some moderate stopping on road to get some temperature into the brakes, nothing significant, no ABS, no, no real hard stops or anything like that, just to kind of bed the brakes in initially. And then once you get to the track, it's really important, especially with new pads and new rotors. What you wanna do is you wanna go out Bring the car up to temperature and up to speed kind of slowly over a couple of laps, kind of getting moderately more braking into the car. You're trying to bring the pad temperature up in a gradual process. Then run a little bit quicker, get the pads kind of hot, and then let the car cool down. Don't use a lot of brake. Basically, let them come back to temperature in a reasonable fashion. Wait till the next session before you really get hard on the brakes with new pads and new rotors. Um, that's going to give you the best performance and the best longevity out of the brake system. So Steve, what should we do when we're done with our track day? When we're finished with our track day, we want to take the car and we want to convert it from track back to street. Back to street means we want to take the rear wing, move it from the track position to the lower angle attack for street. If your car comes equipped with a swing, you want to remove the gurney, save those long bolts, put them off to the side, put the short bolts back in. Remove the splitter wickers on the front, make sure to reinstall the rain tray underneath the hood. We also want to make sure to take our tire pressures move them back to the 32 PSI that we have for street. It should only take a few minutes. Only a few minutes. And then when we get back home, we want to make sure to realign the car back to the recommended street settings. Perfect. That's a lot of great information. Many thanks to all the engineers from the vehicle development team and Steve for being with us today. And many thanks to you for watching. Have fun at the racetrack. And make sure you buckle up.